to another example. So let's say that I want to ask this question, is the language of some Turing machine a finite language? So is the number of things that's accepted by that Turing machine a finite number of things? Are there only finitely many inputs for which we return one? So you give me a Turing machine description M, we're going to return true if the number of things that machine accepts is a finite number of things. We're going to return false if it was an infinite number of things. This one, it turns out, is going to be non-computable as well. This is another non-computable function. We're going to use a reduction to show why. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to reduce some language we already knew to be impossible, to be undecidable, to finite. In this case, we're going to use halt. So we're going to use finite in order to solve halt. So if we had a program that could do finite for us, we could build a program that would do halt. Since we just proved that halt was impossible, that must have meant finite was impossible as well. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to be showing that finite is at least as hard as halt. That is, we're going to reduce halt to finite. The arrows point in opposite directions for reduce versus hardness. I know that's confusing. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about that. This was decided like 40 years ago. Probably about 50 years ago by this point, actually. Uh, anyway, the idea is, let's say that we're given some input where we are asking this halt question on that input. On the MW pair, M is a machine description, W is an input string. So for this instance of halt, so for this machine input pair where we wanted to answer this halting question about that machine and input, we're going to use those to build a brand new machine. Let's call that M prime. And the idea of this machine M prime is that by answering the finite question of this machine M prime, that's going to give us the answer for the halting question for M and W. So we're going to use M and W to create this new machine M prime so that if I could answer the question of whether or not the language of M prime was finite, then that was secretly the answer for whether or not M halted on W as well. More specifically, how we're going to define M prime is we're going to say that if M halts on W, uh, I have this backwards, if and only if M on W runs forever. Okay. We're going to define this machine M prime so that its language is the empty set if and only if M runs forever. So whenever M ran forever on, its, on that input W, the language of M prime was going to be the empty set. So it's going to reject everything. So we're going to reject everything if M runs forever. We're going to accept everything if M halts. So reject everything if M runs forever, accept everything if M halts. So the language of M prime is either nothing or the language of M prime was equal to everything. It's going to be one of these two. Which it actually is depends on the behavior of M on W. Notice that when it's nothing, the nothing language is finite. It has a finite number of things in it, that being zero. The everything language is infinite. because it has all infinitely many bit strings that belong to that language. So that means that if I knew whether or not this language was finite, I knew whether or not it was going to be nothing. So I could tell you if M halted on W. So let's see how this works. Here's some pseudocode for what I'm going to do with M prime. We're going to talk about this in the fashion we saw before in a moment, but this is the pseudocode for what things are going to look like. Let's say that I'm trying to write this function that's going to solve halt. So that's my goal. My goal is to write a function that solves halt. So I'm trying to do def halt on M and W. So that's my goal, to fill in the body of this function to solve halt for me. The first step for halt is I'm going to use M and W to build this machine here. So you can write Python programs to create other Python programs. Has anybody ever done that before, 
written a Python program that would write another Python program? Okay, a couple of you have. How many have written a Python program that would write some other program, potentially in a different programming language? Okay, a few more of you have done that. This is something that I do all the time. I'll write Python programs to generate, let's say, JavaScript in order to do things for web pages and so forth. So this is something that, that is just a handy thing to do. Oftentimes you call those macros. So basically what we're doing is we're defining a macro. We're writing a Python program where one of the steps of writing this Python program is to write just a, an entirely different Python program. And which Python program that is that we wrote depends on the input. So what this other Python program is going to do, I'm going to call it M prime. I'm going to be creating this Python program. I'm never going to run it. So I'm going to create this Python program, but never run it. So I'm going to create this Python function M prime. And it's going to receive some hypothetical input x. I actually don't care what that x is, because I'm never going to run this. I'm never going to provide an argument for that parameter x. So I don't care what it is. Let's just say that this is going to take some input, whatever that is, some input bit string, let's say. I'm never going to provide one, but it could take one if I wanted to. So what it's going to do, what this program is going to do, is it's first going to do that universal Turing machine thing. So it's going to run that machine M on W using that universal Turing machine thing. And then maybe assign the result of that to Y. I'm never going to use it, so I don't care. But it's going to do the universal Turing machine thing with M on W. And then once that's done, it's going to return true. So all it does is says, simulate the operation of that Turing machine M that was given as input to halt on that input w that was given also as the second parameter to halt. And then once you're done simulating that, throw away the result and return true. If this runs forever, we can't execute that line of code. This is why we don't want to run the program. But if this line ran forever, if the simulation of m on w ran forever, if that never halted, then we can't return true. The only way we could ever return true is if m on w finished. So this is acting sort of like a gatekeeper. This line where we said run m on w, that's acting sort of like a gatekeeper to our actual accepting statement, to where we actually accept our input. So if m halted on w, then that meant no matter what input I might have provided to x, m prime is going to accept it is going to return true. No matter what I filled in for x, m prime was going to return true on that input. The input didn't matter. If, however, m ran forever on w, then no matter what x I provided, this was never going to return true. So if m halts on w, then the language of m prime is going to be all possible strings. However, if m on w ran forever, then the language of m prime was none strings, the empty set. The empty set of strings. There were no strings in that language. In this case, it was infinite. In this case, it was finite. That is, like, impossible to read. Let's do this. That one was infinite. This one was finite. So if you could answer the question of was this infinite versus was this finite, then you had to know whether you were in this condition that m on w ran forever versus m on w halted. So if there was some sort of like magic little elf or something like that that could tell us whether or not languages of machines was finite, we could say, all right, clever little elf, then what does m prime do? And then we could use that answer for m prime to answer the question about halt for m on w. So that's what we're going to do. Why is this still in Java format? Sorry, ignore these. And then this should be a semicolon instead. And then this goes away. Hopefully, it's readable enough. So now, if we have this finite function, we can use that finite function in order to solve halt by saying, first, we're going to make m prime equal to the string that results from maybe this function that says, Invoke the macro to build the code for m prime. So this make m prime basically says build the source for m prime using m and w. 
and then we have that string as m prime. If finite were to exist, we could invoke finite of m prime, and that's just going to tell us the answer. So here's what this looks like. Assume towards reaching a contradiction that finite is going to be decidable, that we can compute finite. That must have meant that there was some Turing machine that we could use to define finite. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this Turing machine R that decides finite for us in order to build this machine D that decides halt for us. And the way we're going to do that is first we build this machine M prime that says run M on W then accept. So we're going to build this machine M prime and then take the source for M prime and then give that as the input to finite. So if R tells us, yeah, the language of that machine was finite, that meant it was empty, so it must have been that M on W ran forever because we never accepted anything. So we can return the opposite. If, however, the language was infinite, well, that must have meant that it was the set of all strings. So M on W must have halted because then we got to this accept line. So the answer was accept. M on W did halt. So by knowing the behavior of M prime, by knowing the language or some property of this language for M prime, we could determine whether or not M halted on W.